We farm about 2,200 acres. We have been full no-till all of our acres for the past four years, and then we have started adding cover crops about three years ago. So at least one third of our acres has had some type of cover crop. Now this year we're trying to add more and more. So our dad is side dressing today. We're he adding is adding nitrogen into the soil. We're adding nitrogen into the soil and then also adding cover crops right into between the rows of the corn. Our daughters and I are side dressing corn. The corn is, is growing fast, so we need to get the nitrogen on with 28%. And then we're also, this here is new to us, we, we attached a Gandhi unit on and we're putting a cereal rye cover crops, cereal rye, rapeseed, and, and uh, radish interseeding into corn uh, at about the V6 stage. Uh, it's new to us, so we're gonna see how it works. My um, dad has been side dressing for the last couple years and now we decided after hearing from um, some advice from NRCS and plus a lot of different um, universities we've been looking at studies, we've decided to add cover crop into our corn. So right now we have the side dresser and we did a lot of research over the winter of how we could do this or what we could do. We decided to put a Gandhi box and connect it to our side dresser. So what it is doing is it's blowing the seed in between the rows of our corn with the fertilizer that we're putting down and it's able to meter out that seed. We had some issues on our first couple fields that we were working with it. We noticed that, so we followed the chart that it gave us, but we are noticing that we're putting down too little of pounds. I think we were down to 18 pounds, so we had to kind of um, figure out or experiment a little bit with the chart and with changing um, our speed and with looking at the meters we had to kind of fi um, figure it out but it seems like now we've kind of got to that perfect spot for about 30 pounds at this point. So we have 27 pounds of cereal rye, two pounds of radish and one pound of rapeseed so a total of 30 pounds that we're putting in between um, the rows of the corn. We've had to really try to figure out what, what works, what doesn't this year. Um, we got the tubes to kind of connect through but at the end we're we've been experimenting with the seed deflectors sometimes we feel like it's uh, it's deflecting almost too much so we've kind of decided to push them down a little bit and through this uh, summer once we finish and we see what our stand is we'll kind of decide how we'll change that or how we'll affect that because it is a little wider than we want it to be right now it's kind of going um, a little farther than the rows that we want so we'll keep watching that and we'll see what happens when we get through this year we experimented with about like 100 acres of planting green with soybeans and the weed suppression was fantastic and we didn't even get much of a growth this spring. So our hope is that the same thing will happen next year, it'll help suppress our weeds and it'll also take up some of that moisture in the spring to help dry out our fields a little quicker and faster so we can get into the field quicker. We're also putting two pounds of radish in with the mix, that's to help kind of break up our soils, get that taproot going, move those um, the water up and down and hopefully break up the compaction. And then with rapeseed, we haven't tried that much yet. I think my dad tried one year, but it got shaded out. So we're interested to see what'll happen this year within the corn, but it's kind of the same type of thing, a little bit of a tap root. And we're hoping that the species together will help each other grow. I got in a no-till using NRCS equip program to uh, help us buy our first no-till drill. And that, um, allowed us to no-till soybeans, which also the drill could conventional seed, so, but it worked out so good. Putting the seed right into, into moisture with beans, it worked out real good. And so after five, six years of that working out, we tried, we tried drills again and, and uh, tried wheat, and that seemed to be working, working good. And we got a combination of lighter soil and heavier soil. When I first got into it, I thought I'd just do it on the lighter soil, but it ended up working on, on uh, both. And so another five, six years of wheat, those two worked, so I figured to try corn. Well, I, I strip-tailed for a few years, which worked really good, but the manpower and the labor, I, I decided to go to 100% no-till with the use of cover crops, and that's kind of got me into corn too. And, I'm just, this is my third year in the corn and 
so far so good. I'm hoping it it uh, is, is going to work, but it's still it's still new to me. So right here we had oats and radish, and then right here where the corn's at, we did a bio strip. So in this bio strip, we had radish, we had lentils, and we had flax. No-till really helps with that infiltration and stuff. So we've seen a huge improvement, especially out here in the low spots. This is Lucy. This is Lucy. We got Lucy and Ethel. They like to help us on the farm every day. So uh, I think our main goal is to keep our topsoil in that precious soil because um, as they've studied over the years, we've lost over half of our topsoil through um, tillage. And so we're trying to keep that and try to build it back because it's, I think you grow an inch in about 100 years. So and what we've noticed is the snow around here, especially in the winter, you can see the erosion. So around our fields, we've been able to keep our topsoil um, in our... Stealing some of the neighbors. Yeah, now that some of the, the dirt from the neighbors is actually coming in and it's staying with ours. So we're, we're happy when the winds, because the winds can really rip through this area, especially when you've got flat and hilly areas. So we're happy to keep the soil on our ground. I really think that no-till and cover crops make a lot of sense. You don't always see the dollar amount, but you can just see it when you go out in our fields. I've noticed with the last couple years working with my dad, being able to see the difference in our soil. It's blacker, um, we have a lot more worms. I would say the first couple years were tough. There was a lot of different things we had to try. There was a lot of obstacles we kind of had to come through, but now we're getting to the point where we're really starting to see the difference in our soils. And um, we're starting to look at lowering our fertilizing rates, uh, we're starting to notice, obviously, being able to do less trips over the field. Also, it's less fuel, less compaction, less labor. Not, we're not having to be out there as much. We notice at the end of the year, especially since fall kind of got late, that a lot of our neighbors were still out in the field having to keep work while we were able to get in the office and start planning for next year and get cleaned up and get everything going before the snow came. So we really like at that aspect. We've noticed a lot with our wheat that the residue can sometimes keep the soils from warming up in the spring and keeping things from germinating. So we found that when you use cover crops, it helps breaks up that residue. And that's what we're really hoping to do with soybeans at some point. We've really noticed that the soybean mat takes a long time to warm up and it's harder for us to get in the fields for the wheat. And then that's our first crop that we like to get in the field. So that's kind of our big issue that we've seen. So we like um, that it breaks up the residue. We like that there's something living there. I was really impressed this January. I went out and I was digging and I even noticed some of the plants, especially cereal rye and the radishes were just a little green still. So it was amazing to see the plants were still working and still doing what they needed in January and February. We have manure on a couple of our fields, so the radishes do a really nice job of soaking up some of that nitrogen and helps release it the next year for us. Uh, we're also hoping that it'll kind of do the same thing for our, our other nutrients. It's taking stuff in and then releasing the following year for us. So rather than losing those nutri nutrients, we're able to keep them. Some um, varieties don't like no-till as much, so we have to be careful of that. Same with wheat. We always like to choose a wheat that has um, a nice strong stem so it doesn't fall over uh, when we're combining, as otherwise we have too much residue, it, it makes for issues in the spring. Um, we've also found that equipment sometimes difficult to find. For example, the side dresser we had to figure out on our own and find a way to make it work for us. And sometimes you can have people thinking, oh, it's pretty weird what they're doing, it's not normal. You know, so you just kind of have to have a tough skin through all that. It's getting better and better. It it, uh, the longer you get into it, it seems like it's been working, working better. Uh, it's the first few years; it's a little frustrating, and, and uh, but it seems like the more you get into it, and then bring cover crops into it, it just uh, it, it makes it better. It, and uh, I like the erosion control and just the building up the organic matter to uh, hopefully fill the soil up, you know, better for the next generation. I was teaching two years ago um, during that time and we had kind of sat down as a family and my dad had talked about how he can't run the farm himself forever so he is kind of wanting was wondering from us girls if we wanted to help um, start up so we kind of were 
going back and forth and I really enjoyed teaching but I did miss home, I missed the farm. So um, I made the decision to come back and so I've been working on the farm full time for a year now. It's nerve wracking when I have a father that's so intelligent and has done a lot of good things. My grandpa has done a phenomenal job with our farm and my great grandpas have also done a great job. So I've had a, we've had a lot of um, very successful farmers in our family and so it can be a little a lot of pressure um, trying to fill their um, shoes but they are so open-minded to try new things I am so thankful that I've got a grandpa and I've got a dad that is willing to try new things they are willing to look into soil health I'm we're very lucky for that because that's not the norm um, I've learned so much from him and I hope to keep doing that our hope is with the next 10 years we can kind of figure out together um, he can teach us we can kind of see where we want to go with everything. Um, for the while, I felt like it was just always him teaching us, but I finally feel like we're starting to bring our own ideas and our own thoughts into there. I'm trying to bring a little bit more technology into it, even though my dad already does a lot with technology. We already use um, GPS, we already use variable rating, um, so it's just kind of helping some of those things. And so my sister and I are just trying to find ways that we can help better the company and better um, our farming practices. I started back in high school about six years ago, uh, working the summers and now full-time probably four years throughout college and so now I'm started officially full-time this summer. They bring another talent to the farm that I really need, you know, on the technology and the computer side of the, of the game and bring excitement and, and a, a, a younger the youngness and the, the energy, that's, that's nice to see. We have just started using a drone. We are using it just to kind of scout our fields to see what weeds. Um, we also like to see if we have any, any nutrient deficiencies, we can fly it and kind of see through that. We've been able to use it to video some of our equipment so we're able to see how it's working in the field, what it looks like, are there any adjustments that we should make. And then we'll also use it kind of in the fall to see when is harvest going to be coming, what do we need to do. Um, my sister and my dad do a lot of the spraying, so they definitely use it to see what kind of diseases, what kind of insects, are there any weed um, things that they need to take care of too. I enjoyed working with family. I, I worked with my, my grandfather and my, my dad through the years and, and bringing my kids and my daughters into the operation is really fun and, and it's been a joy and, the, and their interest in conservation and cover crops and and uh, is enjoying to me because uh, um, both my dad and I have had an interest in that also.